Fancy graphics again, this must be another JD iRacing video. And it is. This time we're actually racing in the Carburetor Cup. Now, the way that iRacing works is you have licenses. They go Rookie, D, C, B, and A. A is sort of the Pro Series, well, then there's an actual Pro Series, but they also coincide with what you can actually race. But if you want to race a cup car like I am, you can race in what's called the Carburetor Cup. It is an unranked series, so nothing uh, nothing I do on track will affect my ratings whatsoever, which is great. We are currently being chased down by the Intimidator, but we are racing on the Ford Next Gen Gen 7 car. These things are fun to drive, and they look damn good to them. I am, of course, in the Marm's Chicken Farm and JD's Chicken Feed and Tackle car. I am in the number four because someone already took the number 28. But I've got the best looking car on the field, so what? Oop, there's another fireworks because I'm recording this again on July 4th. We're going to come in here to our parade lap. Again, we're playing the fun game of is that a bomb or is that uh, is that fireworks? It's, 20, it's the 4th, so of course it's fireworks. Um, it's also uh, the other option is gunfire, but that didn't sound quite like gunfire, so meh. Now, we qualified ninth in this. Now, qualified really does not matter at Daytona. Daytona is a two and a half mile high banked oval using restrictor plates. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drafting with cars. You saw me doing that a little bit of practice with the Intimidator in number three. With the wrong font, I might add. But these cars are fun. Now, they developed this car to be a little bit more emulating of the real world cars. Based, mine's based off the Shelby, you've also got the uh, Camaro uh, Z01s, and you've got the Camrys, the TRD Camrys. Now we get the green flag as we come through the Geico, start uh, the green flag area, and we come out of here. You see, shenanigans already happens as the number 94 takes out the number 2 there as he tries to come back on the track. Uh, but there are no cautions here. It is just pedal to the metal and we slot in. Now, Daytona racing is sketchy as hell. Usually you get an inside line and an outside line. Sometimes they get three wide, certainly towards the end of the race. You know, the real world stuff, but not here. These people are not professionals, neither am I. But we're just trying to survive. Now, outside the draft, you're going to be doing... Ooh, look at these cars. Oh, man. So quick. But these cars are going to be doing about 180 to 182 miles an hour on the straights outside the trap. But inside the trap, if you've got one car, you can get up to 185, maybe 190. In trains like this, you're doing 195. So the draft is really, really important. And the reason why is because they use restrictor plates. Restrictor plates are used in, in these cars to kind of restrict the amount of power. Um, they're getting probably about 400 horsepower into these motors where at most standard tracks, they're doing about 670. Now these restrictor plates sit right on the air intake and are basically a plate with four small holes in them that allow air into it but restricts the power. Uh, it's to keep them from going too quickly. It started actually in the 1980s when uh, basically cars were going about 212, 213 miles an hour around Talladega. That was deemed a little unsafe, so they slowed these cars down to a meager 195. But it created this idea of drafting. Because basically you use the car in front of you to punch out a hole. Your car's aerodynamics keeps the air from hitting the rear spoiler of the car in front of you, which helps reduce their air resistance, which basically allows you to push forward. The more cars you have, the faster you can go. Now you see those cars going down below the double yellow lines. It is not legal to pass a car below the double yellows, but it is perfectly fine to go down there if you need to. Now we're going three wide here out of turn four. That is sketchy as hell. And you can see, oh, a little bit of a bump. My bad, I may have caused that one. Oops, we're not gonna look at that in replay because um, I don't wanna be culpable for murder. There'll be more of that later. But just these cars are a little bit unstable aerodynamically. So sometimes you can get into some sketchy situations here. But we now slot into a single file and we are just booking it. Now I should have followed that, uh, that number 23 car up to the top, but I didn't. I decided to stay down low. And the number 6 car 
goes up high, catches him, and pretty much the whole train catches them. We're only now three cars. We're going a little bit slower. The car up front, the leader there uh, in the number 14, he is just not going fast enough. Either he's hesitant or he just doesn't have his foot pinned or something, but I end up getting pushed up because of that car there getting loose, getting down on the apron. I squeeze the number 12 up to the wall and I try and slot down and see if I can catch the draft of the leader here. See, the number 23 car has booked it to the front, so I really should have followed him. I'm so, sort of kicking myself, but last that's drafting. There go more fireworks. But now we're up behind the number 12 car. Ah, uh, well, the camera angles around Daytona. Now they break up into two wide now. Three cars break up top, three on the bottom. I decide, you know what? The top felt a little bit safer as I had gotten bumped wide on, on the bottom. So, yeah, let's do that. We've got the Intimidator behind me. If you're wondering, the Intimidator is Dale Earnhardt Sr. That's his uh, number three Goodrich paint job on the next gen car. Uh, Dale Earnhardt unfortunately passed away around this course in 2001 in the Daytona 500 and fortunately there has not been a fatality in the top three series of NASCAR since but it's sort of it's neat to see people do tribute liveries there goes more fireworks and more definitely not gunfire but now I'm behind the number eight uh, Texaco Halloween car. Beautiful livery, I might add. It is lovely to see the gold Halloween logo there. But we are just not going fast enough. The, uh, the bottom line is just pulling away from us. So I'm going to come down and get behind the Intimidator. See if we can start moving up. Now I go a little bit wide there. That's because the number three has been traveling a little bit erratically. Kind of wanders around a little bit, haunts people. Number 12 makes a daring dive to the inside. What a move there. Just a slot just big enough for this car. It doesn't cause disaster. Not to him. Things are getting a little bit dicey. Now we're catching up on the number 94, he's a lap down, there's a few laps down after his incident in the first, right, basically out of the opening uh, lap there. Past the number 7, he's a lap down, he kind of slots in behind us, hopefully carry the draft here. Now we've also got the 29, who's also a lap down. And the number 3 dives in. And to the below the double yellows, there's more fireworks. And we kind of just followed it a little bit, but we didn't get any position, so it's technically not illegal around here. It's only at this course in Talladega that there's a double yellow rule. Other tracks, you can use all bits of paved road. You can even use the grass if you want to. That number six, kind of kind of using the grass there. Got a little bit loose, went down. He's going to try and slot in behind us to try and see if he can catch any of the draft. I don't know if I got ourselves a pretty good pack going too wide through here. Basically, my spotter is telling us to stay low, stay low, stay low almost the entire time. And here's where things get a little dicey, because the number three car comes across my nose. It almost looks like I pitted the Intimidator and took him out. More fireworks there. And I felt really bad about that. I had a checkup really bad, too, and I lose the pack. Which means, pretty much, my fight for first place, or really any decent spot, has been dashed. 
heartbreak there. But at least a little consolation prize. We show the gyro cam. I love the gyro cam. Gyro cam stays level and really shows the intense banking around the Daytona. Um, I don't remember exactly what the banking is. I believe it's like, I believe it's like almost close to 30 degrees. It is steep. So now we're just trying to see if we can maintain speed, see if we can even catch up to them. There's no chance, but oh my goodness, calamity happened in front of us. We thread that needle and we avoid the wreck. So let's take a look and, and see what happened there, because it's important to take a look at that. Let's first take a look at my crash with Dale Earnhardt here. Because I want to absolve myself of murder. He's definitely not. You see goes to the inside there, tries to come back out, and just comes across my nose. Nails me in the right corner, uh, right rear corner panel. Oh my goodness, and he gets destroyed. Oh my goodness. Well, let's take a look here from this sort of front, uh, rear-facing chase cam. See, there's a little bit of concertina effect as the 12 checks up, he checks up there, comes to the inside trying to avoid it, tries to cut back in, doesn't realize I'm on the inside, so I'd say it's a 60-40. 40% me, 60% him, and oh my goodness, his wheels get knocked off his car and then back on. That was a hard, hard hit. Let's look at it from the blimp can. You see where he checks up, comes to the inside. I was kind of on his inside. I was probably going to lay out the gas just a little bit if he had just slotted back in, but no, he tried to block me there and paid a huge price there. Now we're going to take a look from the number 16 car. We can kind of see a little bit of the spin there. You see the smoke. He, his spotter's telling him to stay high, but oh, number three comes down low. That ends his race there. Hard hit, and the car is just wrecked. Oh, and it just sounds awful too. Hard hit. But now let's fast forward a lap and take a look at the shenanigans that happened in front of me on, uh, I believe this was lap seven. Oh, more fireworks. But you see the 94 kind of bumps into things and causes a whole calamity. I don't even know. Oh my goodness. 28 just nails the 23. And oh, geez, the number nine just head on collisions him. Oh, he's going to need a Snickers after this. Ooh, Snickers kind of sounds good. What if I have any? See, that's how uh, advertising works. So you see the 94. He bump crashes the one, which you should not do in the corners, especially with these cars, and just causes the whole pile up. Oh, those five cars out, number one loses the wheel. There I go, sliding right through, avoiding the wheel in the car there. 28's already hit the 23 now, leaving debris all across here. Now let's watch me. This is from uh, my cockpit here. And... I see all that happening there, and I do not lift. My foot is through the floor and just sails right on through. Now we're going to come back here, and we're going to take a look at... Uh, this is number 23. There's the bump. One goes into him, causes him to go up track, and here's the pileup. Now, he makes a mistake here. He should have just stayed put, but he goes down and just the 28 just destroys him. And now he can't even see it happening. There's the number nine. And, oh, what a rough ride. That is exactly what he saw. This is, oh my goodness, that was really close for that car. We're going to come up here to the start and watch where, I mean, the 94 was already involved in one accident. Now we're going to take a look into another, where he kind of gets a pretty good jump. Kind of looks to my inside, but then just gets spun, and he tries to hold on to it, comes back up into the two, hits, hit by the Pennzoil car, and he's just sliding. Terrible way to start the race. Just terrible. Uh, but he, he basically goes right back to the garage. Now we're going to look at it from a different angle here. See the number 11 goes down the start. And then all the craziness happens. Oh, that number 11 just in this racing there. Cars are spinning. Ah. 
let's watch it from the number one view, because it's actually the number one that I kind of deem at fault here. So he tries to get up into the draft, hits number two, which then goes down and hits the, uh, the number 94 where he kind of shoots off there. And so it was pretty much his fault there. So if we want to rewind this, here's his contact, hits the two, which hits the 94 and sends him down. Watch it from this angle here. Yep, that is it. And you just look behind and see all the carnage that he caused. And there's my lovely mom's chicken farm car. It's mom's chicken farm. JD's chicken feed and tackle. We feed them the best, so they taste the best. We're going to come back in here to, I believe this is two laps to go. And after passing that wreck, I pretty much wound up in fourth place. Um, apparently, I'm guessing the number two car or the number one car uh, ended up disconnecting. So this actually turned out to be a battle for second place. Which is just crazy. Oh, that's Daytona. Daytona is a little bit wacky. So there's number 12. There I am. I've got about 0.5 seconds on him, and I've got his draft. So I'm basically setting him up to pass him on the next lap. So this is a common thing to do, especially if it's just two cars, or even if you're in the pack, is to kind of lay back a little bit, leave a little bit of a gap, so that way I can get a run. Now we're doing about 190 coming into, the, into turn one and out of turn two. And you see, I'm actually getting out of the gas just a little bit. He's trying to keep an arrow, keep me from going on the inside. This is where I set him up. So I've got about a car length behind him. There's no one else around me, so I can kind of really set him up just perfectly. He's also got a little bit of damage to him. So I then go to his outside, get his draft, try and keep him down there. And I've got the run, and I pass just a hair in front of him. It's actually about a third of a car length that I was able to get the lead. And that was the end of the race. So I think we should wrap this up. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, comment, share, all the youtube -y things. And I want to thank you for joining us for yet another exciting installment of iRacing here with GLR. Um, I have been enjoying the stock car racing, and there will be certainly more to come. So with all that, uh, I want to bid you a Happy 4th, although this is probably going out on probably the 9th or the 10th. And uh, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.